Welcome back, guys, to Queensland Abandoned Mines. You're watching part two of a uh, two-part series uh, that sees us out west of Jinjin looking for some uh, long-abandoned copper mines. And they pulled a lot of uh, copper out of these holes in the ground. Uh, they started pre-1900, around about the 1870s, and for the most part uh, mined pretty successfully till around about the year 1910. I think they pulled over 90 tonnes of copper out of these mines. There's probably about 150 mines, probably in about a 10k radius. And they pulled out over 27,000 ounces of gold, and that's uh, part of the gold crushing and sluicing uh, plant you saw in the first one. They pulled out some molybdenum, um, and they also got uh, some silica. They are mining silica at one stage. Uh, and they also pulled about uh, 750,000 ounces of silver. So really productive mines. Obviously, the uh, prices of uh, silver and copper can vary greatly. So that was what ended up dictating the success of the mine. So if you guys like following our adventures, uh, then uh, click that like button and hit the subscribe button. And that means you'll stay up to date and get notifications uh, next time we air an adventure. So Mrs. S has just found a wheelbarrow. That's old miner's wheelbarrow, improvised out of a uh, 40 gallon drum. It's not overly old because it's not one piece. The old miner's ones were actually fathomed out of one piece of iron. Oi, what's that in there? So you're saying if it was, it's welded so it's a bit... Yeah, see how it's got joins in it? Yeah. And, sorry, um, like screw pieces and stuff. Yeah. The original miner's ones were actually fathomed out of one piece of metal, so they had no... Um, no put together pieces, it yep. was all just one big, and then the tub went on the top. Right it's hard to piece together this. That could but be. This is. Um, Do you reckon it's the remnants of a camshaft? It's a like shaft. A stamp? Yeah, it's like a. I don't know what they're called. It's definitely um, English iron though. Two and a half inch. And over there, guys, we've got some uh, huge, huge mullock heaps. Again, hard to tell on the GoPro, but they'd probably go up about uh, 40, 45 feet up in the air. All right. So I'm not expecting these workings to be absolutely huge because you can always size up the size of the uh, waste rock. So there's one uh, spall heap there, another one here. It's probably small to medium size, but we will soon find out. Let's get down there and uh, have a look. This would have been a pick, so this was commonly used in mining. This end's actually sheared off, so they've hit something exponentially hard there because it would have come out. And this end is all bar and nub now, so that's they very, got some they got some work out of that. Yeah, very well used. That's cool. Um, timber's long gone. Timber is long gone, but you can see the workmanship that would have gone into that. So have you made it the blacksmiths? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and it would have been brought in with the workers or it may have been made here locally. There was a few blacksmiths places in the area. So maybe miners, blacksmiths made pickaxe pre-1900, do you reckon? Absolutely. This is, without a doubt, 1880s. All right, if I find anything like that in the hole, I'll bring it up. That'd be great. <laughs> this is actually a pony shoe. Uh, you can tell by the size that it wasn't from a particularly big horse, so it wasn't draft horse or anything like that. Um, I would say probably 1920s by the shape of it. It's missing its um, toe clip there. So could you link that to the way they're pulling the ore out? Um, probably you could, yeah, unless it was just, um, unless it, it looks like a workhorse shoe. See mm. how it's short? Yeah. Most shoes would come out longer. So it was literally just protecting the toes of the animal through the terrain. Yeah. This one here's a, a boot. A, um, off the heel of your boot and all the old timers used to use these to preserve their shoes because they were so expensive yeah um, so would have been probably full leather sole and they tack them on the heel so that their boots don't wear out quite as quickly oh and then swap them do they when they yeah, or just, yeah. I guess you're not going to wear through that they, well yeah. they do wear out because they only really had one pair of shoes yeah they, ha they might have had church shoes and everyday shoes um, so that's what that is that's in actually really good condition for its time frame and then that's part of a cross cut saw. that's cool very well used not much <laughs> yeah. left in there um, so this looks like handle end to me because it would have got wider yeah. you can see a few little square holes there so yeah. square holes indicates the nails or whatever they riveted it on with um, and then yeah it would have got broader as it went out that's a really good find that one 
and very well used because that's blunt as they come. They would have sharpened them by hand as well. Cool, that's right? cool. Yeah. Amazing things you see when you slow down. That's awesome. Yeah. And we're off. All right, so you will need to slide the rope protector. Be very careful. Down to you? Yeah. I'm on my stop, so I can't go anywhere. Just where my hand finishes. Perfect. That's awesome. Smelly. Holy shit. You don't want to see what I can see. Really? Yeah. It's too late now. It's all right. It's not rock. All right, get back from the edge, buddy. Oh, it's all, it's all mud. That's all caked on. It's just hanging in there. All righty, guys. Safely made it down. Alrighty guys, so safely repelled down. Thought I chose a good face, but I've got all this compacted mud sitting under and I didn't see until I got underneath the roots of this tree. She's, uh, she's a bit crook. So I've made it down. It's probably coming down about an 80 degree dip. And we're coming into like a little stope chamber here. I've uh, got all my friends down here with me again. A billion mozzies. Oi. And uh, this, this is where you've got to stop and look. There's no way I'm going any further than this. Number one, it's plugged. A couple of dead birds down there. Uh, but check, check this out. Shouldn't even be touching that. Look at that rock. So. It's all just slabbing off, so all of the ribs are all delaminating. So I'd say that's a winds. And then up behind me, I've got what used to be a really cool looking incline shaft and a massive friggin' toad. All right. You can tell that's been filled in. You can tell that's been filled in because all that rubble would be from up the top. There's Mr. Toad. It may have ventured off back that way. A bit of a rat's nest in there. And we got that beautiful copper colour again. I mean, if it didn't smell in here, I'd love to stay in here for a bit longer and take photos. That's all she wrote for this one, guys. All right, time to make my way back up. Is that where you want to set that rope? Yeah, that it's actually a really good spot. Okay. Stop shifting, flipping. Yeah. Just make sure you've got the guide over it. WCE 1911. Yep. 
that's also the next slab up there. Alright, let's do this. <laughs> Man, oh, I'm all good. You know what this is? A shaft cap. Yeah, I'm guessing. The shaft is pretty deep, way deeper than I thought. Oh boy. Hey, what's going on up there? All right, I'm down the bottom. There's no way I'm coming off the rope though. It's a nightmare down here. It's just really messy. I think you're right, uh, Lee. I think there was a poppet head or a hoist and when they've disassembled it, they've lobbed it straight down. Uh, but I can feel air coming up, so we'll see. I just need someone to lob my rope bag down, please. Clear. Shot. Alrighty guys, I got down this one. That was tricky. Got this big thing, I'm not too sure if it's a mucking sheet or because it's about the same surface area as the mine. I think it might have been a cap. It's pretty messy down here, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, the people with them today know a lot more about the property and they think uh, this is an old poppet head. I'd say that's spot on. Uh, can see an opening down there. All right. So I spoke in the last pit, you've got to use your judgment. I don't know if what I'm sitting on is the very bottom of this shaft. The maps say it's not. So if I'm just teetering on these timbers, it certainly looks very well filled in. But my light is casting a bit of shadow down there. So I'd say what we've just intersected is that 40 degree decline tunnel. That I think like run the uh, the strike of the vein, copper vein. All right, it's nice and cool down here. I feel like hanging out here all day. But time to get back up. Yeah, coming off the bottom now. Just have to get my breath, it's a big climb.
Alright, you're gonna pull the rope protector right back. Yeah. Drop, eh? Yeah. Yep. According to the mine maps, the bottom of it's supposed to be 116 metres, but I think there's a ledge. I can't remember if it's just one or the other one. So this whole bloody place is riddled with tunnels, eh? I don't think I was at the bottom. No, you wouldn't have been. Not like. Close. Um, whatever this was, all this has just been dumped down. Yep. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, if you liked today's episode, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit the little bell icon, and that means uh, next time we air an adventure, uh, you'll be notified on your smartphone, tablet, or PC. And a massive shout-out to uh, Lee and Serena for taking me on the adventure. Now, uh, for the most part, our, our missions are pretty well aligned in terms of our plight for history and trying to piece together the old uh, story. And obviously, mine's more to do with mining and Queensland mining history. Uh, and they look at a lot of the uh, other historical aspects, the old layouts of the towns. I mean, these two have worked together for months, and they've got uh, graves exhumed and... Uh, they've been able to piece together through hours and hours, hundreds of hours of research, you know, some missing parts of um, some really important piece of Queensland history. So massive thanks to those guys. I mean, they didn't come in any mines with me today and they effectively took me out there uh, all day as, as two uh, really experienced guides that know uh, the property owners because, again, it is on private property. So very appreciative. So fun day. I mean, they really put a lot of shit on me for possibly overreacting to what I thought and I still stand by with some extreme forward driving. And now I dished out a bit of shit because I heard a lot of words getting used like wireless and Sheila, which I really didn't think had been used much since the 1960s. So, great day. Thanks, you too. If you ever come uh, across them in the community or, you know, you've got some uh, and you want to uncover some history of your uh, plot of land uh, out in regional Queensland, then uh, give me a call. I can put you in touch with these two. They'd love to get involved. Really good at what they do. And, uh, again, special thanks for today. So until next episode, guys, thanks for tuning in and uh, we'll see you soon on our next mining adventure. Well, guys, thanks for tuning in to uh, our channel for 2021. So for New Year's Eve and signing out for the year, we wanted to actually give you guys a bit of a montage and also just a huge thanks to our subscribers and anyone that's followed us uh, along the way. Just realised this week we've just uh, ticked over 450 subscribers, which are uh, super pumped on. So thanks for tuning in, especially those that have been with us since the beginning. And speaking of the beginning, we just put together a little bit of a montage which showed you where we really started, which was uh, cruising around on our push bike. I think we clocked over 300 k's over three or four months exploring all of the abandoned coal mines around Torben Lee, Begowan and Fraser Coast and got really enthralled by all the old equipment and the stories that we ended up digging up when we were researching these old mines. And that led us to explore some areas a little bit further north uh, of Harvey Bay where we found our first ever gold mine shaft. And at that site, there's actually a fair bit of stuff left topside, which I uh, found really interesting. And uh, looking down those dusty old shafts, and uh, admittedly a lot of those were flooded, we ended up uh, making a little thing called the mine probe, which is a little GoPro rig with some lights that you can drop down some exposed shafts and see what's down there. Now, that wasn't quite good enough, so we ended up uh, researching and uh, buying a lot of equipment and doing a fair bit of training, uh, which uh, involved getting ropes, gas meters, lights, uh, you know, a lot of carabiners, a lot of uh, sending gear, descending gear. And once we were trained up on that, we were away. We ended up uh, accessing some really cool workings and uh, finding some really cool stuff underground. And I think in total, there's around about 30 or 35 uh, episodes, if you will, of uh, Queensland Abandoned Mines, but... Uh, I believe there's only about 15 or 16 that we'll ever publish because a lot of the adventures that we've done throughout the year, they're on private property or one of the conditions of entry onto these mines was that we were definitely not allowed to film, never allowed to air and uh, share uh, the locations, the old workings that we're granted access to. So uh, we'll always be respectful of that. Uh, and then came the training. I mean, we had some uh, absolutely intense training. Here's me and a couple of my buddies uh, at a commando course that we ended up doing, uh, you know, there's me with a weight vest there with a respirator on, uh, tire flipping, just some really hardcore stuff. 
Now here's me bench pressing uh, 265 kilos for reps. I mean, you name it, we've done it. Sorry about the bit of a dodgy camera work there. You can see my face has been cropped off. I dropped 150 grand on this thing from NASA. It's down in my shed. Uh, that's uh, really good for setting ropes. And then I hired a boxing coach that insisted I just uh, head to the abattoirs and just beat the living shit out of carcasses. Uh, but it really did pay off. Uh, the training, in all seriousness, led to uh, us uncovering some really cool parts of Queensland mining history, which we absolutely loved. And most of the workings that we're more specifically interested in accessing are all the pre-1900 stuff, all of the early stuff. But these mines were, were effectively worked with just hand picks and dynamite. And what they were able to achieve way back when is just absolutely fascinating. Uh, hats off to these old miners. There's not really an interest in our channel. We'll never really document any of the uh, modern day mining. I mean, we have sent a couple of emails out to a couple of the modern mines to see if they do tours, but uh, they absolutely uh, do not uh, allow that. And uh, our journeys have taken us to some really scenic spots. Uh, we've seen some beautiful parts of Australia along the way. I think in total we've trekked over 250 or 300 k's on our mountain bike, and we've done over 450 k's on feet that spanned over 11 months. It's taken us on some hectic hikes, uh, some soul-destroying hikes. Uh, and we've met some really cool people and made some really good friends along the way. You know, these are people that are either landowners, they were interested in the history. Uh, we had some guides that actually took us out for some missions on, uh, on the day. Uh, we had some farmers that actually granted us some access and wanted to come with us for some missions for the day. We had some local guides that took us on some epic adventures. Uh, and we've got a lot more coming in 2022. So... Just for now, if you've uh, watched this on New Year's Eve, uh, thank you. Uh, thanks to all our subscribers that have followed us. Like I said, especially if you've been with us since the uh, since day one, and we really look forward to what we're going to bring you in 2022. Thanks again, guys.